Hi guys, Lee, it's um, FX Model Miniatures, <coughs> back with um, another little video because uh, something exciting has happened. Um, ArchiveX, Guy Cowan of ArchiveX, has, uh, as some of you may know, released the uh, water-based, waterborne acrylic uh, Archivex paints. Now, these have been a thorn in Guy's side for some time now. There have been so many issues uh, with getting these out there uh, to you guys that actually care about using um, period vintage hues. Uh, in your paint when you're painting your Star Wars or your BSG or Aliens um, And they're finally here some of you guys have been painting little bits and bobs great to see um, I was very uh, Privileged uh, yesterday to get a visit from Guy and he brought me all these new toys to play with and um, Yeah they're really, really, really nice. They're really nice. Um, I've not used acrylic paints for a long time now. Um, I've been using the Archivex enamels <clears throat> um, quite quite a bit. Uh, I don't paint as much as some people, um, but I have been using the enamels for quite some time. And, uh, wow, yeah, these really are uh, a bit mind-blowing. Um, for starters, they're a lot more user friendly, um, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, um, but they're a lot more user friendly for the, for the, for the newbies, um, very simple, very clean, effective, uh, dropper bottle with a, uh, stainless ball bearing in the, uh, container. Uh, to break that paint up, keep it uh, keep it nice. Um, you know, you basically just twist the lid and put paint in your airbrush. Now, um, as I said, I've not used acrylics for quite some time, and uh, yeah, I, I was. Um, Unsure of the viscosity to actually shoot at. Obviously, I've you know I've got my own method of mixing the enamels, and I don't do it by ratio. I don't do it by percentage percentages. I just do it by feel. I do it by eye. I never count or mix anything you know with any form of ratio. For me, it's pointless. I do it until the paint feels right for me. Um, and it didn't take me that long to get used to it, to be honest with this. Uh, first colour I shot today, I'll show you what I shot today anyway, but first colour I shot today was uh, D&H Caboose Red. Um, now what I did, I put just a few drops of the, uh, the uh, thinners that guys had created for Archivex uh, acrylics. I just put a few uh, drops of that in the uh, airbrush cup and then some paint and um, just mixed it a little bit quick and started going and yeah it wasn't really happening for me um, it was a bit too thick so I added just a bit more uh, thinners and just mixed it around my airbrush cup with a, just a cocktail stick um, one tip I'll give, mix it really well in your airbrush. Give it a real good mix with a cocktail stick or something similar. Really swirl it around and get the, you know, the viscosity, you know, get it uh, uniform all the way through your cup. Um, I did find I hit a few thin spots where I, that was my fault. I'd just not, you know, stirred it enough. But anyway, that, you know, that, that's not, you know, that's not an issue. That's a user error. And I, I, I get a lot of user errors because I'm not, I'm not an amazing user. Um, but, um. Yeah, rough ratio, if anyone wanted to know, about 70-30, so about 30% thinners. You know, I, I never, you know, but it, it's kind of the, the ballpark I was finding. So about 70-30 on shooting, and um, initial coat, go pretty light with it, don't go crazy. Even over primer, it will start kind of washing around a little bit. Um, 
it hasn't got that instant grunt and tack uh, of the enamels but just one just uniform light coat and just literally a few minutes just a few minutes i mean i normally just blast things with a hairdryer or something not crazy heat you know just to give it a um, just get some air circulating around it it dries in no time it dries real fast by the time you put in a second uniform coat on it's going on beautifully it is going on so nice um dare i say it and i'm a big big fan of the enamels <coughs> excuse me it goes on actually uh, a lot neat it goes on very smooth as you see the uh, paint curing it, it's leveling out to this crazy flatness it's really nice um so very impressed with that um guy dropped me yeah the entire uh set over um so we've got there's all sorts going on in here you know we've, there are so many hues um for me to be uh, diving into i mean they come as a you know a five paint set i mean there's one of the famous ones uh, big sky blue big and new hope color um the packaging is wonderful it's it's so there's mud there's another great a new oak color wonderful color mud is um yeah the packaging is wonderful it really is it's absolutely leaps and bounds it, it just looks so so cool um compared to what's out, out, out on the market anyway i mean it's not just what's in the bottle it's you know the whole the whole feel of it is just wonderful it's really really yeah it, it's just come such a long way and um yeah it just looks so good you know it really looks good you know right from the you know the simple cardboard uh box to the uh you know the dropper bottles which are excellent they they really do perform great i mean once you've just applied it into your airbrush cup just a quick wipe on the on the tip as you close it with a bit of tissue with a bit of um kitchen roll excellent no mess no fuss a lot simpler a lot cleaner than the enamels um and i think i'm gonna be a convert i really am um the big big plus side to this um in my man cave <laughs> um i collect i restore and collect vintage um, rc cars all my RC cars are like wrapped up in polythene because any painting that I do, I don't want it, you know, any overspray getting on those. They're, they're worth a lot of money and they've, they took me a lot of time and effort to restore and build and paint, etc. Um, honestly, uh, no such thing with the uh, with these waterborne. I had, you know, just no, there's no fogging um there's no uh you know there's many times even using my extractor um a little <coughs> little extractor that i've got it, i always get that fogging when i use the enamels you know you step back from your bench and it's like wow you know it's like john carpenter's come through your uh your man cave filming a one of his movies um but yeah none of that other plus point real big plus point smell um of late i've become a lot more susceptible to um to just smells um uh, silly things like aftershaves perfumes and using enamel paints you know they really they, they my head screams even if i use a mask you know mega headache i could smell nothing from these i could smell absolutely nothing there was no overspray i wasn't breathing in noxious paint fumes it was great really enjoyable experience um so yeah guys i mean many of you know what archive x is you know uh, uh this was born out of sheer passion guy is an exceptional painter and he loves to research uh the paints that are used on ilm um miniatures and props costume and these were born out of just a passion um to have the right hues for what we paint as Star Wars miniatures, be they Bandai kits, AMT kits, right up to you know, um, you know, fine molds, uh, right up to filming miniature replicas. You know that is that that is our that's our mainstay. That's our passion, um, and it's so nice when you can just literally pick up a bottle 
of paint that you've managed to research and you think that's going to work and you haven't got to custom mix it and you haven't got to custom mix it and get it wrong and then you haven't got to custom mix it and in the case of for instance Tamiya you mix something that's really really good and within a day or two it darkens as well no no such thing with this it's um yeah it does what it says on the tin uh really wonderful but yeah i mean these were all just born from um just brutal slogging research into the flow quill hues of the 60s 70s early 80s you know so all those wonderful railroad colors um that we you know we know and love so well but then transferred over into star wars but what i'll do now i'll just move these and i'll show you what i've painted today and just give you some feedback on uh, kind of how it will behave for me right guys i'm gonna go a bit freehand here uh this is what i've shot um just move that lamp because it's flickering this is what i've shot today <coughs> Well, this morning uh, with the uh, Archivex Waterborne, just started shooting the uh, the Death Star tower frame, and this is DNH Caboose Red, which shot on really well. I mean, it's really covered beautifully, it's super smooth. Now this thing is a nightmare to paint, you know, there's so many spars and rods and various angles you've got to get paint into and it's really awkward. So from my first go at using this paint, uh, yeah, just really impressed, it performs well. As I said, do um, an initial coat, an initial thin coat and just hair dry that off. Give that just a little bit of time, just to just to get a bite. You just see the matte um, effect come in, um, and then go at it. You know, you you can be pretty. Uh, I, I've hammered this. I've just really gone hell for leather at it. You know, I want to test drive this paint. I want to see what what it does, and if I mess up, I mess up. You know, user error. The paint itself performs wonderfully. Now, what we've got here, we've got uh, D and H caboose red and then we've got this main front panel that is uh, that's actually ILM DS surface grey it's actually the Death Star surface grey that's a matched colour that is a guy actually had that matched to a, a uh, screen used um, Death Star tile so we've got a coat of that and that is just shot directly onto styrene that is a 0.5 styrene plate that I've cut and I've just shot the uh, the Archivex Waterborne straight onto it and I didn't use any major care I really just shut it on there it's super smooth it is super super smooth then just rough as per the uh, the filming miniatures I've just masked off various areas that I can see in the reference for this tower and I've just shot, you know, random thicknesses of uh, SP Dark Lark for these darker blotches. And then the rest of it on there is actually just um, architectural pen in black and white. It's very slapdash, you know. Um, and then the crane here, same, uh, same colour. That's DS uh, Death Star Tile Surface Grey. I just shot that over, that was fine, didn't really mask anything, just went at it, you know, not really taking uh, much care, but it all went really smoothly. These are a couple of little Bandai um, tiles that I've cast in resin, those have been primed and also shot in uh, DS Surface Grey, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, it, that's the kind of aim at the moment i'm not set on the base yet this is just something i'm working on but it's it's more about the paint uh to you know in this aspect it's uh yeah it really works well now one tip i can give um 
it's different to the enamel in the way it behaves in your airbrush. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to put you back in the in the tripod. It um, it does behave quite differently. Um, than the enamel it needs a little bit more attention in the way of airbrush care now I hope some of you guys look after your airbrushes because they are our life's blood in what we do but anyway what you're going to notice is if you're doing long drawn out jobs it's going to dry in the cut more it's going to dry all around the edge there okay so pay attention to that okay really clean that out the other thing I've noticed today is we've showed you before how some of us if that would focus focus okay showed you before how some of us work without the diffuser on the end of the airbrush you know we work directly from the needle because we want to work up close um, you know in finer lines pay attention to the tip of your needle okay it will dry pretty quick on the tip of that needle especially when you're shooting more air than paint now what i mean by that is like when you're really taking uh due care and attention to actually like doing a line and you're you're really feathering the the trigger just for a tiny bit of paint because you're putting more air through it will dry on the tip little tip for that that i found um little pipe cleaner i was using or a little paintbrush just um to hand just to dip in the thinners and just take it off the tip of the needle and you're good to go um, being an acrylic paint it sets up real fast so naturally if you're blowing lots of air through it's going to set up real fast in your airbrush hence you know it's going to um it's going to dry you know on the sides of your cup quicker uh so yeah that's just a little thing that I'd, I'd recommend really look after your airbrush clean them well after using this stuff because it cures fast and you're not shooting a solvent through it yeah you're using the archive x airbrush thinner and you're using an acrylic paint you know that, that solvent will normally clear any ills that we leave in our brushes if we've got a little bit lazy when we're using the enamels it's not going to be the case for these waterborne so uh it's not a con you know it, it's uh, the, but you know every pro comes with a con you're using a paint that's very easy to use that levels beautifully dries level and you know real quick but you're just going to have to put a little more input into looking after your airbrush um i haven't tried uh, any brush painting with it yet um which i hear is phenomenal um but uh yeah uh, you know i will uh, cross that bridge when i come to it but um yeah it's just a few just just a little bit of feedback really on uh this new product that's um hopefully well it's already proving very popular i mean and you know obviously guy wants to get this out to yeah uh the, not just the studio scale guys but the the guys that are building the bandai kits etc It'd be beautiful, really wonderful to see accurate hues um, going on these models. I mean, you know, we've all seen the uh, the Bandai uh, Star Wars um, books that have been released over the past few years. You know, to see some of those um, models actually painted in the correct hues. Not that, you know, the, the, those Japanese guys that are painting them are doing it wrong, but it'd be like, such a wonderful thing to see them being used and the correct hues going on those models, rather than somebody having to painstakingly mix it and then sometimes get a little bit off um but yeah guys you know i hope um that uh just gives you a little bit of feedback into what this paint does i mean you know that that's the that's the finish of ds surface gray on this and this isn't a super clean casting you know um i just cast a few of these some time back i molded a few should i say you know i had I've had them cast for a while. Um, I just give them a quick dust off, blew some primer on them, and put the grey on. And yeah, it's just a really, really, really nice finish. I mean, I was I was masking this panel 
not 10 minutes after I put the base coat on it. I literally hair dried the initial coat, went hell for leather, put in, you know, a, a full block coat of uh, surface grey on it, and I was laying down painter's tape within 10 minutes over it. No paint pull, you know, nothing, nothing. Absolutely superb. Um, but yeah, guys, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hit me up with any feedback, and honestly, um, any questions about paint hues, paint colours, what to use, how to use it, post it up in the ArchiveX group. You know, ArchiveX have got a wonderful group on Facebook. Um, post it up in the group. You know, by, if you're not a member of the group, join the group. Um, post up your questions in there. You know, um, Guy does all he can to answer as many questions as possible. But sometimes it's better to maybe... Uh, Ask the hive mind as well. You know, Guy is a one-man band. He's only one person. He works very hard at doing this. Um, so sometimes, <laughs> give him a break. And, uh, you know, inquire with the hive mind in the group. You know, by all means, PM me. Ask me in the group. Um, yeah, but, you know, we're, we're never really... We're, we're not telling anyone, you've got to use this. You've got to use this colour. It's the only colour that's right. It's not. It's just suggestion and then it's also suggestion through usage you know if we can prove that um, a certain hue works in a certain amount of layers or the way it's been layered then it's got to be right rather than just blind speculation not everything we do is blind speculation you know we do actually try and research a little bit into what we're painting um, and it's always nice to help people so once again please ask any questions in the group but um yeah if i can be of any help um fire away guys but i hope you enjoyed that one and um i will have a an update on something pretty cool i've uh, got coming together soon um it's uh i think i told you about it before uh, an empire strikes back ralph macquarie concept I'm really excited about it and I've started back forming pieces for it but uh, more on that later I'll, I'll try and get a bit more all together for you guys to see um, but yeah guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon